One week ago, Turkish forces crossed into Syria. Earlier this week, President Trump took decisive action to call on Turkish forces to stand down, to end the violence, to agree to negotiations. And today, uh, I'm proud to report, thanks to the strong leadership of President Donald Trump and the strong relationship between President Erdogan and Turkey and the United States of America, that today the United States and Turkey have agreed to a ceasefire in Syria. The Turkish side will pause Operation Peace Spring in order to allow for the withdrawal of YPG forces from the safe zone for 120 hours. All military operations under Operation Peace Spring will be paused and Operation Peace Spring will be halted entirely on completion of the withdrawal. Our administration has already been in contact with Syrian Defense Forces, and we have already begun to facilitate their safe withdrawal from the nearly 20-mile wide safe zone area south of the Turkish border in Syria. Let me say this. Uh, also includes an agreement by Turkey to engage in no military action against the community of Kobani. And in addition, the United States and Turkey have both mutually committed to a peaceful resolution and future for the safe zone, working on an international basis to ensure that peace and security defines this border region of Syria. In addition to the settlement today with the ceasefire, Turkey and the United States mutually committed to the defeat ISIS activities in northeast Syria. This will also include an agreement renewed today to coordinate efforts on detention facilities and internally displaced persons in formerly ISIS-controlled areas. Also, Turkey and the United States agreed on the priority of respecting vulnerable human life, human rights, and particularly the protection of religious and ethnic communities in the region. I spoke to President Trump just a few moments ago, and I know the President is very grateful for President Erdogan's willingness to step forward and to enact this ceasefire and to give an opportunity for a, a peaceful solution of this conflict that commenced one week ago. For my part, uh, I'm grateful for the President's leadership. Uh, I'm grateful for uh, the more than five hours of negotiations with President Erdogan and his team that arrived at a solution that we believe will save lives. And let me also say I'm very grateful for this team, and to be able to have alongside the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, uh, our National Security Advisor, Robert O'Brien, Ambassador Jim, Jim Jeffries and Ambassador David Satterfield. It was a great privilege. And each of the members of this team contributed equally to achieving this outcome, which is a great contribution to security in this region, and it's a great contribution to the strong and enduring relationship between the United States of America and Turkey. Lastly, I, I want to express my appreciation to millions of Americans who I know were carrying this moment in prayer. We heard from people all over the country whose hearts were heavy with the loss of life in this conflict over the last week, long to see it brought to an end. Um, and I believe their prayers, the strong leadership that President Trump provided to this moment, and the cooperation uh, with President Erdogan and Turkey has made this possible. And so again, uh, let me say uh, 
a week after Turkish forces crossed into Syria, Turkey and the United States of America have agreed to a ceasefire in Syria. It will be a pause in military operations for 120 hours while the United States facilitates the withdrawal of YPG from the affected areas in the safe zone. And once that is completed, Turkey has agreed to a permanent ceasefire. And the United States of America will work with Turkey, uh, will work with nations around the world uh, to ensure that peace and stability is the order of the day uh, in this safe zone on the border between Syria and Turkey. With that, let me recognize Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and thank you, Mr. Secretary, for your great work. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks. I, I, uh, I think the Vice President said it well. I just wanted to add this thought. Uh, there, there obviously remains a great deal to work, of work to do in the region. Uh, there's lots of challenges that remain, but this effort tonight sets the conditions uh, for the successful resolution of this particular piece, which created enormous risk and uh, a real risk of instability. And, and President Erdogan's decision tonight uh, to work alongside President Trump to achieve this ends will be one that I think will benefit uh, Turkey a great deal. Thanks. I know you want to take some questions. Great. Uh, Humaira, where are you? Hello, Go right ahead. Um, thank you very much. Um, what do you... How do you how do you overcome, um, how will you overcome the damage that's been caused over the past week? There's been a lot of animosity between U.S. and Turkey. A lot of things have been said and a lot of threats of economic sanctions have been made. How are you going to repair uh, the relationship going forward? Thank you. Well, first, as you'll see from the agreement, um, part of our understanding is that with the implementation of the ceasefire, uh, the United States will not impose any further sanctions uh, on Turkey. And once a permanent ceasefire is in effect, uh, the President has agreed to withdraw the economic sanctions that were imposed this last Monday. But uh, make no mistake about it, uh, President Trump was very clear uh, with our ally, Turkey, about American opposition. Uh, to Turkish uh, military forces entering Syria. The uh, President made that uh, clear in his discussions and his correspondence with President Erdogan. Uh, and I believe that the candor and frankness that President Trump applied to this and the strength of his relationship with President Erdogan both contributed to the ability for this agreement to come about. Now we will, we will work together to implement this agreement. As I said, uh, our team is already working uh, with uh, uh, YPG personnel in the safe zone uh, for an orderly withdrawal uh, outside uh, the 20 mile mark. Uh, and, uh, and we're gonna go forward together to bring peace and security to this region. I'm very confident of that. Um, Okay, uh, 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 Ganja Shenai. Ganja, please. Thank you, Ganja Shenai from TRT World. There are reports by some international organizations on how YPG is treating ethnic and religious minorities in northern Syria. And Christian leaders in Turkey are making calls to the country to ensure peace and security in the region. I'm wondering your thoughts on this. Well, let me let the Secretary also address that, but I can tell you that uh, uh, President Erdogan and I spoke at great length about uh, the importance of protecting uh, religious minorities in the region. President Erdogan also shared with me the perspective of many leaders uh, in religious communities here in Turkey uh, who had uh, great concerns uh, about violence and persecution uh, taking place uh, along the border. Uh, and so part of our agreement is to continue to work very closely uh, to ensure that uh, religious minorities can thrive and that uh, religious pluralism uh, uh, is, uh, is, is one of the characteristics of this, of this safe zone for some time to come. Ms. Secretary. Um, and not only this, we've certainly heard from, uh, the Vice President, I heard from Christian leaders around the world who expressed much of the same concern that you just 
uh, described. Uh, we think this reduction in violence, this ceasefire, uh, reduces the risk of that. So we think this greatly contributes uh, to protecting religious minorities throughout uh, throughout Syria uh, and throughout the broader Middle East as well. This all obviously happens in the context of lots of religious challenges, lots of challenges for religious persecution in Iraq and other places. Well, we think this is an important contribution in that regard. The other thing is that we talked about at some length um, is that um, to the extent there are abuses that are identified, um, we'll ask um, each leader, certainly President Erdogan and his team and others, to investigate any uh, allegations of abuse that have taken place. And let me maybe add an addendum to that. One of the things uh, I know the President um, and the American people are most proud of is the investment of hundreds of millions of dollars to help rebuild um, a Christian, Yazidi, and other religious minority communities in the aftermath of the horrifying violence uh, during, the, during the ISIS uh, period, both in Syria and in northern Iraq. We'll continue to flow those resources to support those communities. But as you'll see from uh, this agreement, it is a specific undertaking by Turkey and by the United States to ensure and to protect religious minorities uh, in the affected region. Uh, Sean Tand. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, you mentioned that there's an organized withdrawal of the YPG fighters. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that a little bit more? You said there's been an agreement with them. Where they're going to withdraw to? What do you see of the future of them? And while there are obviously concerns here in Turkey about the YPG and the, the links to the PKK, uh, many in Washington say, for example, that they led part of the fight against the Islamic State group, against ISIS. Uh, what do you see for the future of northern Syria? Uh, do you see any future for, uh, for the Syrian Kurds politically there? Well, our, our commitment... Uh, with Turkey is that uh, we will work uh, with YPG members and um, um, we also know as uh, Syrian Defense Forces to facilitate an orderly withdrawal over the next 120 hours. And let me say that's literally already begun. Um, and where they will be withdrawing from uh, is the demarcation line roughly uh, 20 miles south of the border. Um, uh, Turkey's willingness to uh, pause and to embrace a ceasefire of military operations uh, to enable us uh, to, uh, to see to that orderly withdrawal uh, of, uh, of YPG will, uh, we believe, make it possible for that to occur. And it, I know it's already, already underway uh, as we speak. Um, but look, the Turkey's uh, had a great concern uh, about their border. And while the United States of America did not approve of uh, their military crossing in, into Syria, um, uh, we, we have always endorsed a safe zone. Uh, and it was a matter of, uh, of discussion and negotiations. And, and we believe uh, that um, uh, that uh, the Kurdish population in Syria, with which we have a strong relationship, will continue to endure. Um, the United States will always be grateful for our partnership with SDF in defeating ISIS. Uh, but uh, we recognize the, the importance and the value uh, of a safe zone to create a buffer uh, between uh, uh, Syria proper and the Kurdish population and, and the Turkish border. And we're going to be working very closely. So we. Uh, we think the agreement today first uh, ends the violence, which is what President Trump sent us here to do. Uh, I said it again and again to uh, President Erdogan, is President Trump sent us here to end the violence um, and to achieve an immediate ceasefire. Uh, and uh, thanks to the agreement that we negotiated today and the strong stand that President Trump took uh, in the preceding days, we, we've achieved that. Uh, we've also achieved an opportunity uh, by working with YPG to move out of the area to create more peace and security and stability in that buffer zone. And uh, we're going to be working very earnestly to accomplish that. We believe that can be accomplished during the 120-hour period, and after which there'll be a permanent ceasefire, and then we'll continue to engage. Again, uh, not militarily. The President made it clear that uh, we're not going to have military personnel on the ground 
But uh, the United States will continue to engage diplomatically, uh, politically, and of course in humanitarian aid and support to affect all uh, of the people affected in this region. Last question. Go ahead, Mr. You mentioned that, me, you mentioned that uh, the United States, you mentioned the United States opposed Turkey's incursion into northern Syria, that, but that Erdogan has always wanted a sort of safe zone here. What concessions did you actually get out of President Erdogan, number one? Number two, have you gotten specific assurances from the YPG that they will comply with the terms of this agreement because this is something that they have said that they would not do? And finally, uh, with the Kurds moving south and now with, sort of, with the U.S. sanction in terms of them moving south, what, how would you address critics who would call this potentially a second abandonment of the Kurds? Well, I think you'll be able to see from the agreement itself um, what concessions were made. Uh, President Trump, in his telephone call with President Erdogan earlier this week, um, and in the directive that he gave us to deliver, uh, was very clear uh, that he, he wanted to cease fire. He wanted to stop the violence. Um, Turkey's engaged in an active military operation. Um, uh, I, I can tell you that uh, as our discussions began over the course of the five-hour period of time, we, we reached a place of agreement about how a ceasefire could uh, benefit uh, Turkey, achieve President Trump's objectives, and also contribute uh, to a peaceful resolution of the safe zone. And I believe that, uh, I believe that we've accomplished that. Um, with regard uh, to the YPG, the Syrian Defense Forces, uh, we have been in contact today, and we have received repeated assurances from them that uh, they'll be moving out, uh, that uh, they greatly welcome the opportunity uh, for a ceasefire uh, to make a, a, a safe and orderly withdrawal from those areas in the safe zone uh, where they still have a presence. Um, and uh, we're, we're very confident uh, that that's already taking place, and we're going to be uh, using all the uh, leverage that we have of having fought alongside uh, Syrian Defense Forces in the battle against ISIS to uh, um, facilitate uh, their safe withdrawal. But uh, we think uh, we uh, we think this is an out outcome that uh, will greatly uh, serve the interests of uh, uh, of. Uh, of the Kurdish population in Syria, it'll greatly serve the interest of Turkey, and it'll create the kind of long-term buffer zone that will ensure peace uh, and stability uh, in the region. Mr. Vice President, yeah, just, right. just want to follow up on that question. What specific concessions did did Turkey receive? Specifically, I want to ask you if, if they brought the issue up of, 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 the, of the bank, Hall Bank, Hall Bank, rather. Uh, not in the context of these negotiations. I think when we had concluded the negotiations, um, uh, the topic uh, was raised, and uh, we informed them that that was a matter uh, for the Southern District of New York and the Justice Department. But um, let me say the, the, uh, the concessions that the United States made have to do with the fact that uh, the President had made it clear that uh, if there had not been a ceasefire today, there would have been a new round of massive sanctions against Turkey. And you'll see in the agreement uh, that uh, on the basis of the pause uh, of 120 hours, uh, a, a ceasefire over the next five days, that uh, we will not be implementing additional sanctions during that period of time. Once we have a permanent ceasefire, uh, Following the orderly withdrawal of all YPG forces, uh, the United States uh, also agreed uh, to withdraw the sanctions that were imposed on several cabinet officials and several agencies earlier this week. So, 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 so um, just to, to, to be clear, though, just to, to nail this down, so it was simply the sanctions that would be removed. Nothing else was was offered or given yes. to the Turks. Right. That's Thank you guys. Yeah, go ahead, Kate. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. While you were here negotiating with the Turks for several hours, both of you, 
The United States of America did not support Turkey's military action in Syria. President Trump made that very clear to his friend, President Erdogan. And the United States imposed sanctions earlier this week. And uh, the President made it clear yesterday, and we made it clear again today, that uh, there would be additional sanctions coming to bring an end to the violence, to the loss of innocent lives. Uh, in this border conflict. Uh, that being said, let me say, I, I really believe today, today's ceasefire is a credit to President Trump and to President Erdogan. It's a credit to the strong relationship between the United States and Turkey. It's also a credit to the strong relationship between our two leaders. I mean, where there are differences between friends, it's important that the friends uh, and let their feelings be known. President Trump did that in this case. Um, but it facilitated us being able to reach an agreement that has now resulted in a ceasefire um, and we believe will set the stage for creating a peaceful and stable a safe zone, and the United States is committed to achieving that for all the people of this region. Thank Mr. You. Vice President, Mr. Vice President, can I finish my question that I started, please?